Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to prepare financial statements if we start with an adjusted trial balance. So let's get started. My name's Jeff from Finally Learn. We're teaching the accounting series for financial accounting. We're in chapter four looking at how to prepare financial statements. And so we're given an adjusted trial balance. And now what is an adjusted trial balance? A trial balance just lists all our accounts with debits and all the accounts where they have credit balances and to make sure that our debits and credits equal. So here's our trial balance. Now adjusted trial balance means it's after we have made any adjusting entries. So this is chapter four in accounting, principles of accounting or financial accounting. So let's do our financial statements based on the information that we have here. Now let's think about a trial balance. The very top accounts, in fact, these accounts are all assets. And then we have liabilities, you know, payables or liabilities. Then we have a couple of, uh, actually three accounts that are equity accounts. We have one account here that's a revenue and we have several accounts that are expenses. So the format of the trial balance lists assets and then liabilities and equity. Now assets, liabilities, and equity are all balance sheet items. So they go on the balance sheet and revenues and expenses. These down here, revenues and expenses are all income statement items. So let's get started with our income statement. We're going to start with sales. And we have here in this case, we have sales. So I'm just going to point to it here using Excel, uh, start with an equal. So this is a formula. Our sales are $108,000. We'll format for dollars here in just a minute. Then we need to subtract out uh, cost of goods sold. Our cost of goods sold is going to be given, we know that it's given as $52,000. Now, we have an intermediate step. We have our first calculation of profit, and this is gross profit. Sometimes this is called gross margin. So we're going to take 108 minus the 52, and so we're at 56,000. I'm going to go ahead and make this all dollar signs, make it really easy to read. So I need a line here to show, hey, I've got a subtotal or I've got a subtraction. 108 minus 52 is 56,000. Then the next category would be something like selling at administrative expenses. So I'm going to type it all out, selling and administrative expenses. So here we're going to do a sum of any selling at administrative expenses. We have supplies expense, advertising expense, depreciation. So I'm going to include all those. I'm not going to include income tax. So I'm going to add those up and that's 14,200. Let me uh, verify this here. This is, should be 14,200. Okay, we're happy here. So we have gross profit minus selling administrative expenses and we're going to end up with something like, um, we could call this operating income. We could call this earnings before tax. So let's call this earnings before tax. Now we could call this a couple of different things. Uh, we could call it operating income. We could call this earnings before tax. We could call this pre-tax income. So those are very equivalent terms. So we have 56 minus the 14 and we're left with 41,800. Now we do have income tax expense. So our income tax is going to be 11,800. So we're going to end up with net income in the amount of 41 minus the 11,800 or $30,000. Now this is a good little uh, problem that we're doing in Excel because it works out to be exactly 30,000. Well, it doesn't always work out to be to the whole 10,000s or whatever. But here's our basic income statement. So we sold items that cost that at 108 that cost us 52. We made a $56,000 gross profit or gross margin. We had some expenses of running our business and we had um, income tax or so net income is 30,000. All right, so our next thing we're going to do, I'm going to copy just to make things a little bit faster. 
Our next thing we want to do is, by the way, the FYE is for the year ended December 31st. So our next statement is going to be the retained earnings statement. Or you can call it statement of retained earnings. Now the format of the retained earnings statement starts with beginning retained earnings. And so we can call this retained earnings on January 1. So let's do that. Retained earnings January 1. And what is that number? Well, that's the number on our adjusted trial balance. That's $44,000. Now watch. On these financial statements, we do not have any debits or credits. We're just now summarizing the information. So we have retained earnings, plus we're going to add net income. Our net income we just calculated to be 30000 so we're going to grab that number. And then we're going to subtract out any dividends. So our dividends are 7000 So we're going to subtract out the 7000 in dividends and we'll end up with retained earnings at the end of the year. So our retained earnings on December 31st is going to be 44 plus the 30 minus the 7. So our ending retained earnings are going to be $67,000. I'm going to make this all dollar signs. And so now we've done two of our financial statements. We've done our income statement and we've done our retained earnings statement. The last one we want to do is our balance sheet. So I'm going to copy just so I can get the format down and do our balance sheet. So Bison Inc. and we would say balance sheet. Now sometimes this balance sheet would be called statement of financial position. Sometimes the income statement is called a P&L for a profit and loss statement. And the way we date the balance sheet is not for a year ended. It's just going to be the date December 31st, 2025. Alright, so we're going to start with assets. And remember, it's going to assets, liabilities, and equity is going to be the format of the balance sheet. So our assets, we're going to start with current assets. So this is at what's called a classified balance sheet. So we have several current assets. So current assets are assets we expect to convert to cash or use up within, um, not 60 days, but one year. One year or less is a current asset. So I've got three current assets that we expect to use up within one year or less. So I'm going to copy these and put them here under current assets. And what are our current assets? Cash is $62,500. And we've got uh, two more. I'm just going to copy these down. Cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. All right, I'm going to give us uh, lots of space with dollar signs so I can... I like to see the dollar signs at first. So now we have a total current asset. So our current assets, I'm going to give a category here of current assets. So the total here is going to be 77,000 for current assets. Now you can do that quickly by just doing a sum function. You see what I did? I used a, a shortcut, but you can always do this. You can highlight these three and go to the summation and do auto sum and that's 77,000, or there's a keyboard shortcut. I'm on Mac, so it's Command-Shift-T, and if you're on Windows, it's Alt and Equals. So Command-Shift-T, and you see I have total current assets. Then you could have some uh, category. You could have categories for intangible assets, or plant assets, or long-term assets. So in this case, um, we have we have copyright, and we have equipment, and we have accumulated depreciation of equipment. So these are our long-term assets. So let's put them all in a category. So instead of current assets, we'll call these um, long-term assets. And so I'm going to list, I just need two. I have a copyright. 
copyright singular here with no S and equipment. All right, so here's what I'm going to do on the copyright. The copyright, you could have a whole category called intangible assets. You could put that in that category. But here I'm just going to put the copyright is 8,000. Now, for the equipment, for the equipment, I'm going to say equipment comma net, and I'm going to make the equipment 30,000 minus the 5,000. So it's going to be 25,000 as our equipment. So that's net of the depreciation. So our total here is 33,000 of long-term assets. So what is our total assets for this little company? It's going to be a total of 77 plus 33,000 for a total of 110,000. I need a line to get my uh, long-term assets and I need both a top line and a bottom double line to show we're finished with the assets. So I can put that. So this is real easy to read. I've got current assets of 77,000. I've got long-term assets of 33,000 and our total assets are 110,000. So I'm going to copy this down just to make life a little bit faster. So I have things formatted so far. And so instead of having assets, we're going to have liabilities. And instead of current assets, we'll call these current liabilities. And so what are our current liabilities? Well, we have two current liabilities. We have accounts payable and income tax payable. So accounts payable and income tax payable. So I'm going to point to the uh, trial balance here. We'll have accounts payables, 1500 and then The income tax payable is 3500 I don't need an extra line here, so I'm going to get rid of it. I can do Command and a minus and get rid of that entire line, delete that line. If you're on Windows, that would be Control and minus. And so here, obviously, this is not current assets anymore. This is current liabilities. But I have 1500 and 3500 That is my total current liabilities. So current liabilities are 5,000. Now, I also have long-term liabilities. And I just have one, I believe. My long-term liability is a notes payable for 15 months. So notes, notes payable is going to be $8,000. So now I need a little more space here. I'm going to just give myself a little space. So I've got current liabilities. I've got a notes payable. That's my long-term liabilities. And so I can total that up if I want to. Long-term liabilities. And my total liabilities will be the total of the current and the long term. I guess you don't really need a, a subtotal when you just have one thing, but that way we're just kind of being consistent. You can see if we had multiple uh, long-term liabilities, how it would work. So we have 5,000 plus 8,000. So our total liabilities are going to be 13,000. Now, the very bottom thing that we're going to end up with is our equity and our total liabilities and total equity will have to equal the 110,000. All right, so our, our next category is, in fact, let me copy this down a little bit, kind of give myself a little bit of a uh, little head start here. So our equity, or sometimes it's called stockholders equity. I'm gonna end up with uh, common stock and retained earnings. So 
So if we look here, we have common stock, we have retained earnings, and we have dividends. Now, we're not, not going to include dividends. It's going to roll up into retained earnings. We've got a new balance of retained earnings, an ending balance, and there's no sales or expenses here. This is the balance sheet with assets, liabilities, and equity. So what do we do here? We have common stock. I'm going to point to that. Common stock is 30000 and you're tempted to put in the 44000 Let me show you this. You're tempted to put, because you're, you're not paying attention, you're putting in the 44000 And let's show how it would work. So our total equity would end up being, in this case, 74000 And if we add the total liabilities plus the total equity were at 87,000 and you say this is total liabilities and equity. And you want to finish it up and you say a line here and a, a double underline here and you say okay I'm finished. And somebody comes along and says wait a minute what's the name of this statement? Well this is the balance sheet and the balance sheet has to balance it doesn't balance so wh where are we wrong? Remember our retained earnings. We just calculated our retained earnings to be 67,000, not 44. It starts at 44. So we're going to put that in. And what we'll have is our liabilities now will total 97,000 plus our equity and our total liabilities and total asset, total liabilities and equity will equal total assets.